here on the board, so we know what we need to know. So nitrogen fixation. <coughs> so first of all, what is nitrogen fixation? For sure. Now we're just going to write a really abbreviated short um, summary reaction for nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is when atmospheric nitrogen, molecular nitrogen, Okay, so molecular nitrogen, it's two nitrogen atoms, and they're held okay. together. You've got a triple covalent bond here. And oh my gosh, that triple covalent bond, it's so hard to break. Very few organisms have the enzyme to break that triple covalent bond. Okay, now why do we want to break the triple covalent bond? Well, it turns out that molecular uh, nitrogen Organisms can't use molecular nitrogen as a source of nitrogen to make amino acids and proteins, to make nucleotides, and thus DNA and RNA, right? Molecular nitrogen must be reduced first to ammonia before most organisms can use it to make proteins and DNA and RNA, right? Okay, so if we just show this little short reaction, um, we're just going to show uh, molecular nitrogen being reduced to ammonia. Now it's not balanced, you guys, everything's missing, but this is just the nutshell idea of nitrogen fixation. We're going to take our molecular nitrogen and we're going to convert it into ammonia. In fact, if I ask on the um, lab practical to write a short summary reaction of nitrogen fixation, that's it right there, okay? Now like we said, that, gosh, that triple covalent bond is so hard to break. It takes a special enzyme complex called nitrogenase. Okay, so if I ask you for the enzyme or enzyme complex that catalyzes nitrogen fixation, what are you going to tell me? Nitrogenase. Good, you guys. Okay, now nitrogenase, very few organisms have the um, genes to make nitrogenase. Only a few. And it turns out only a few bacteria have the genes to make nitrogen. Only a few bacteria can make nitrogenase. So these guys are very special to us because without them, it would be, um, we might have, um, um, there might be limiting amounts of usable nitrogen for organisms like us to make our nucleic acids and, and proteins from. Okay, so the two groups of bacteria that we're going to have you guys just look at today that can make um, nitrogenase, which can carry out nitrogen fixation. Okay, the first group are the cyanobacteria. Okay. And we're going to have you look at slides of um, no stock. And you might remember no stock. We've already looked at no stock. And no stock, what an amazing little bacterium this guy is. Because you'll recall that we looked at slides of no-stock already, and as um, their little ball-shaped bacteria, okay, and what, what we'll do, we found a really good slide yesterday, you guys. So I'll set up a demo scope with this really, really good slide of no-stock. What we're going to have you look for are the little smaller cells. These smaller cells will appear green. Why will they appear green? Do you remember what no stock, what all the cyanobacteria can do, which um, beautiful green pigment they make? Chlorophyll A, good. Okay, so since they make chlorophyll A, which, in, which incredible process can these guys carry out? Yeah, these guys are, they're incredible. They're incredible little guys. They can carry out oxygenic photosynthesis. Okay, and, and again, you guys, this is a quick review, a little summary reaction for oxygenic photosynthesis. These guys can take inorganic carbon dioxide and water, and in the presence of light, and using your little beautiful little chlorophyll A, so we abbreviate chlorophyll A, is C-H-L-A, they can convert these inorganic reactants into energy-rich organic molecules like glucose 
And another end product is molecular oxygen. Okay, that's why this is called oxygenic. It, it means oxygen generating photosynthesis. Okay, so gosh, we guys, us guys, us cable heterotrophs, we love these little photosynthetic cyanobacterium. They make organic molecules for us. They release oxygen so that we can carry out aerobic respiration. That's incredible. Okay, so why the heck am I talking about oxygenic photosynthesis? Well, we're supposed to be talking about nitrogen fixation. Okay, well, there's a reason. And the reason is this enzyme complex, nitrogenase, is inactivated by molecular oxygen. We say it's oxygen sensitive. Okay, so it's inactivated, it can't function, it's inactivated by molecular oxygen. So I want to pose a question to you. Do you think it would make sense that no stock would have nitrogenase present in these little photosynthetic cells? Do you think it would make sense? And, and if you say no, why do you think it wouldn't make sense? What are these photosynthetic cells producing in large amounts? Oxygen. Oxygen, right? Okay, so you see where that would be a huge problem? If the no stock were carrying out photosynthesis and trying to carry out nitrogen fixation in the same cell, it would be a problem, right? Because the oxygen that's being made through photosynthesis would do what to the nitrogenase? Inactivate it, right? Okay. So the different nitrogen fixing bacteria, they've, they've developed different strategies to solve this problem. This is so cool, you guys. So with the cyanobacteria, the strategy they've taken is to make a special cell, a special larger cell called a heterocyte. Now, um, some of the textbooks use the older name, heterocyst, and maybe you guys have had previous biology classes and you've learned um, the name of this cell as being a heterocyst, that is fine by me. If you use heterocyst on a lab practical, I'll totally give you credit for it. Um, just so you know, though, the newer name, you know, if you want to impress people, is heterocyte. Okay, now the heterocyte, what's really cool about it, this is where the nitrogen fixation is going to occur. This is where the nitrogenase will be present, okay? So here's, the, here's like some lab practical questions, you guys. If on the lab practical we had a slide of no stock, right? And we put the pointer on the larger cell and we ask you to identify the cell or structure at the tip of the pointer, what would you tell us? Heterocyte. Heterocyte, right? What if we ask you to name the unusual enzyme complex that's present in the heterocyte? What would you tell us? Nitrogenase. Nitrogenase, good. And what if we ask you for the function or the unusual process that occurs in the heterocyte? What would, what would you tell us? Nitrogen fixation. Yes, you just nailed it. Those are like some classic questions, okay? So the heterocyte contains which enzyme again, you guys? The nitrogenase, and thus what is the function? Nitrogen yeah, you got it. You just nailed it. Okay. Now, again, um, I'll set up a demo scope um, of the no stock slide that has really nice heterocytes. It turns out if no stock's living in an environment where there's already plenty of um, ammonia or nitrates present, they won't make a lot of heterocytes, right? So that's why if you guys were to come up here and grab one of the slides, off the slide tray, some of the slides, there aren't many heterocytes at all, and people yesterday were getting frustrated, especially because they're so tired, right? So as I said, we'll set up a demo scope over on the, let's see here, how about, how about this end bench here, you guys, where it's uh, not quite so crowded. And so for sure you can see the heterocytes. Now, what we'll do is we're gonna leave it on low power. And the reason is on low power, you can barely make out the tiny, tiny, tiny little photosynthetic cells. But the larger heterocytes then become quite apparent. Okay, if you go down to high dry, sometimes it's far, it, number one, sometimes it's hard to find the heterocytes. And on the newer scopes at least, that high dry lens, I don't think the resolution is that great. So it's a little bit harder to see the heterocytes, believe it or not, using high dry. So we'll have a demo scope with uh, nice no stock